thank you. And uh, thank you for the early comers. Um, I'm um, doing this for the first time for the webinar. I usually do the Zoom. And so it was a different um, recording. So um, thank you for joining me. I'm um, very happy that uh, you're interested in subject because I think it's one of my favorite subjects uh, of all time. And um, I'm going to be speaking for a few minutes and then sharing with you my screen where I created a few slides. Feel free to uh, send any questions in the chat. Um, you have uh, Charlotte here who's helping me with monitoring the, uh, the, the webinar. And um, I'm looking forward to your questions and anything I can answer um, directly, I will do so. So why uh, recruiters want to see you invest in your career? Um, and this is very interesting because as a recruiter, I, that's one of the first thing I look for in candidates, meaning that I want to see people who are actively investing in themselves. And I'm going to tell you the reason, but it's a very selfish uh, reason that recruiters want candidates that are very strong. The market is challenging. Uh, as we saw with COVID, things can shift very, very rapidly, and you want candidates that are going to be able to adapt to any situation. So I'm going to share my slides and um, we can start and let me know if you have any questions. Here we are. I'm going to take the slides. So uh, why do uh, right recruiters want to see you see you, you are investing in your career? So I took a quote from Warren Buffett. I think that in terms of investing, I think he's pretty well renowned and we can all relate to that. Um, and he says, the best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. The more you learn, the more you'll earn. And obviously this quote is very well, um, summarizes very well the situation we're in. Um, so the reason we have to think in investing in your career is I want to make sure we understand the difference between investing in your job and investing in your career, right? When you invest in your job, you're basically investing in your employer, right? You might gain a bonus in exchange. You have a, a salary and you might get a better bonus, um, but it's a short-term um, um, situation. Uh, and short-term, we mean maybe two to three years uh, perhaps five years, but it's very rare for anybody to stay in their position in a company at the same employer for 10 years. Um, it's also reacting, right? You're given a task and you react to this task and depending on the changes, you are reacting to your current job. And I like to say it's like looking at the tree versus looking at the forest. You're fixating on what your specific job is today. And so thinking of it as looking at your career, it's really when you're investing in yourself, uh, potentially it's all the earnings of your future jobs. So how much you can earn in the future. And it's taking the long-term view, um, it's anticipating uh, issues and it's looking at the forest. So investing in your job is different than investing in your career. And I want to acknowledge that we work all day, right? We give ourselves a lot of time to our job and to doing the task we are daily asked to do uh, all the time. But, and so it feels tedious to after work think that you have to work on your work, right? And to invest in, um, in your working position. But um, there's a few things that you can do, and we'll talk about it later, that are easy, um, uh, ways of investing in your career and that don't take too much time. And once you start the habit, it comes more naturally. So think of it as, you know, a habit like doing a workout. Of course, going to the gym the first time doesn't feel good. You know, you're sore, it feels tedious, but the more you do it, the more it, um, you're getting stronger, more muscle or leaner, whatever, you know, your objective is, or, or supple, and um, the easier it gets. And then you just have to basically kind of maintain that. And it's the same for your career, right? It's, we'll, we'll show how much time and uh, investment you need to do, but it's really the beginning is a little um, change of habit, but the benefits are so immense that 
quickly, you realize that it is a great way to um, invest in yourself. The second page is I want everybody on this webinar, if there's one thing that you have to understand is the recruiter's interest. And I'm talking about the recruiter because I'm a recruiter, but it could be HR, it's the company's interest, right? So I want you to understand, I don't know if anybody understands this or knows so much about recruiting, but recruiting fees are about 30% of an annual salary. Uh, it takes approximately three months and many meetings, many meetings for the company, many meetings for the corporate, uh, for HR to interview the candidates. And usually as a recruiter, you guarantee the replacement of a candidate if that candidate was not um, aligned with the company or did not you know, do their job well. And that replacement is between six months to a year. So as a recruiter or as, as an HR, we invest a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of resources in finding the right candidates. And that is very interesting to understand because uh, candidates not, don't necessarily see that point of view and don't necessarily understand that um, because of so many investments are made in recruiting, um, we want to find candidates that are going to go beyond the six months and beyond the one year, right? You want to get, have the candidate that's going to grow in the company that is going to be um, uh, making up for the 30% of recruiting fee that um, they uh, engaged uh, for the hire, um, that, you know, the time that they invested and the many meetings. So you want a candidate that really is going to give you back your money, that is going to be interested. And the one thing that, you know, a recruiter or an agent is find a job description, look at the resume of the candidate, see the match, see if the skills are matching. So that's one thing, great. But then maybe also see how um, the candidate is aligned with the values of the company, um, how the candidate you know, functions and how he or she can benefit in the team of adding um, new uh, EQ skills or, or whatnot. But at the end of the day, there's one component that we can't uh, no, right. There's always a factor of um, uh, unknown. Uh, for example, uh, a product can not sell, right? Um, a store can close because the lease came up. Um, a, um, you know, a brand can decide to switch from doing apparel and shoes to only shoes because that are the top um, um, sellers, right? So everything can change. Um, your, your, the company can have bad thing and decide that, you know, they want to cut a, a, a side of their business. And all things are unknown when we hire the candidate. Uh, or COVID, COVID-19 can happen, we have to pivot. And so what you want as a recruiter in an HR is somebody who will be able to adapt to those different situations. Somebody who will be able to make the best for the company to help the company transition, but somebody who's gonna be adaptable and flexible. So somebody who is investing in themselves, who is learning new things and um, trying as best as they can to improve um, or, or, or grow their skill set. So that is one important part. The second thing is how do we assess as, H, as HR or recruiters, um, how a candidate is investing in, in themselves? So I have three basic questions that usually, you know, I ask very quickly in a meeting. Um, and one is how much research did they do to prepare for a meeting? Uh, when I meet with candidates, I will usually give the name of the company. And very quickly, you know, whether it's a phone interview or in-person interview or, or a Zoom interview nowadays, um, I will understand how much the candidate has looked at the company. Did they look at the first page of Google? Did they look up um, who, you know, who was on the, the board of the company? If they, did they look up at, um, you know, recent innovations, recent product launches, uh, recent, recent marketing campaigns? Um, I will even look if, you know, um, maybe on Instagram, if they looked at the comments, I, you know, that's how, how much did they dive in into the subject? And it tells me how much interest and drive they have in the position. And that is something that already I want to see in the first meeting. Um, the second question is, are they proactive when it comes to their own career? That is a little bit more tricky because of course, when you're going to an interview, you don't necessarily want to say, you know, in three, in three years, 
switch from, oh, I'm going to be managing this other company or I'm going to be, but somebody who shows passion for their career, passion for their work, where they're working, how they're growing is very important. And, you know, without sounding too ambitious, somebody who knows that they're trying to grow within company is very reassuring for the company. Um, you don't want uh, somebody who's more opportunistic. Oh, they saw your ad and, oh, that sounds cool. Let me interview for that company. It's, you know, looking at somebody who is um, proactive in their career is somebody who's also looking at their competitors, right? What is happening in the market? What is, um, what are the new tools that they're using that maybe they could learn or, um, or um, you know, look peek into? And finally, um, how are they staying relevant in these ever-changing times? Um, that's something that maybe one does. Um, so um, when you work all day, it's often difficult to attend on top conferences, attend webinars, attend courses. but in some way, it is reassuring when I hear candidates that tell me, oh, you know, it's interesting you say that because I read an article on my competitors or I read on an article on the market or I read about, you know, um, this new tool that was coming up and them sharing that they're looking at the industry as a whole. So that's very important. Um, I think it's, uh, it's fair today to say that, you know, you have to keep track of a certain um, information in your, um, in your uh, field. So these are the three questions that I tend to ask um, on the first call. Um, and so investing in your career. So, you know, most people tell me, well, you know, how do you invest in your career? Uh, how much time does it take? How much money, etc. So I put four tips on how you invest in your career. What is very interesting is that the most important uh, thing is time, and that is your time. So it doesn't cost money, but it is investing in your time. How much attention do you want to put on your career? How much do you spend on LinkedIn um, and refining your narrative and projecting into your future? So there's a lot of things that we can do by ourselves, right? That's why I teach my um, my group of coaches, uh, of coaches, um, how to look into who they are and where they want to go. I call that the, the GPS exercise. Where are you today and where are you thinking of being in two or three years? We can't, you know, nothing is been, being written in stone, that's for sure. We don't know what th in three years um, the world will look like, but it is important to start having a destination so that your GPS tends to go towards that destination, right? If you're a sales assistant and you want to become head of retail, um, it is important to stay on track and to think, okay, I'm going from one store um, making, you know, uh, X amount of volume to maybe multiple stores to manage and then eventually to manage a whole um, um, region or a country. But if you tell me I'm a sales associate and I want to be a CEO or, you know, a head of a, a brand, then I will tell you, okay, great, you have sales, you have store management. Um, maybe it's also important that you have um, online management, right? A digital experience, uh, because today it's a very, very big part of any brand. So it might be important that you... Um, uh, grow your skills in a different area. So depending on where you're seeing your future, um, you know, having a goal of protecting yourself is very important. So how much time do you, do you spend? We have a few exercises that we do on a regular basis. And in, in the coaching um, method, what we do is we spend a little time of projecting yourself. So it's self-reflection, uh, knowing what your hard skills are, knowing what your soft skills are, maybe taking a few tests to kind of assess and give you um, knowledge of how to express yourself. Uh, what are the examples you want to share in an interview? You know, how do you, how can you share your super innovative, right? That's very specific. You know, what is a good example that you could showcase for innovation skills? Um, the second one is courses. So courses are tricky because there's a plethora of courses out there. There's plenty of plenty of courses. And I think it's important to say that you have to pick one that is aligned uh, with your future, but very also applicable um, in your daily uh, job. And that's why um, courses are very interesting. Um, it's something 
thing is, uh, we, we take a little bit of time to also decide, you know, what would be interesting. Uh, I always use this example of um, one of my son wants to be an engineer. And so I had a conversation with an engineer and when he was younger and I said, you know, what course can I help him, you know, start um, working towards being and becoming an engineer. And I thought, you know, maybe he was going to say Python learning, you know, some, some coding uh, languages and everything. And he said to me, no, what you, you're, well, he didn't say no, because I didn't say it, but he said, uh, one thing that is very important for you to learn is improv. And I'm like, oh, great. Well, he does theater, you know, that's great. He said, no, theater is reciting somebody's lines. Improv is learning to rebound on whatever um, the other person is saying. And, you know, I was very curious and I said, well, why do you need improv to become an engineer? And he said, Things are going so fast, I got so that you know you come to a meeting, and the the bid or the scenario has changed, and you have to have people who are very flexible and can rebound on people's ideas, can have a new um, insight, can say yes and, which is you know the principle of of um, of uh, improv. So I was very interested in how you know taking a course on improv can maybe help us become more flexible with um, impromptu, um, such as COVID, for example, you know, or, or the pivoting that is happening to the world today. Um, the third one is networking. Networking is tricky because it has to be relevant and really you have to create trust. So how do you create trust? Well, I mentioned one thing is shared experience. Trust is trust comes from when you have experienced something with some, somebody else, and when you have experienced um, that um, shared moment, then you have an understanding of how the person works, what they're thinking, or you know, versus meeting somebody uh, for the first time. And networking takes a little bit of time, and that's why um, you know taking the time to really find something that is relevant. So connecting, for example, networking with alumni of your school or people who worked um, in a, you know, same company, but at different times. So trying to find something that connects you with them um, or finding maybe that you are um, doing con uh, com uh, community service or um, um, that's for more for children, but, um, that you are volunteering in the same organization, right? I have people who contacted me because um, she saw that I did volunteering with God Loves We Deliver, we had a shared, and she said, oh, you know, we might have been shared, met each other at God's Love We Deliver, you know, I would love to connect with you. And of course, because that's something that is dear to my heart, of course I contacted her. So finding ways that you can really, really um, connect on, on trust. Um, and of course, coaching. Sorry for the misspelling. Um, coaching is very uh, interesting. I did uh, extensive coaching myself, and the challenge of coaching is finding the right person. Um, you know, you I would always recommend spending a few interviewing uh, at least three or four coaches to see if they're the right um, uh, person for you. Uh, I think coaching is also understanding, you know, what you will get out of this coaching and how long it will take. I think it's very important to, to ask a, a frame for coaches and of course references. Ask them that if you can talk with two or three people that they've coached, because that is very interesting. Um, and after that, you have to commit. Coaching is great, but you have to commit to a certain time. Um, I would say a minimum of three months for anything to happen and, you know, more if you can uh, and if your budget allows. Um, so these are the three, uh, the four um, ways you can invest in your career. Um, so, and I think that is very interesting is that we tend to do um, all of this separately. So the program we've created during um, COVID for our, our candidates, I've created a program where we combine basically uh, time, networking, and coaching. The courses, it, it's a, a course itself, so a course, and, um, and that's what we do. Um, and I want to stop on this quote. I don't, um, I'm not sure if we're good on time, um, but this quote by Alvin Toffler. Alvin Toffler is a futurist um, who wrote a book in the 1960s called The Future Shock. 
And he predicted that the world will go so fast and the innovation would be so quick that we would all suffer from the future shock, meaning that we won't have the capacity to adapt uh, to this speed and knowledge. And so he has this quote saying, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And that's something that I think is very interesting because it is basically investing in yourself is being able to learn something new and of course, letting go of some old patterns, some old stories. So you might have had a bad experience um, you know, with a manager. And so how do you turn that and transform that so that you um, can let it go and learn something new? And it's gonna be that process that we're gonna need to do. It happens pivoting. It happens with companies who are pivoting uh, now uh, drastically. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to share one story because I thought that was very early in the in, during the COVID time, and I was really impressed. So it's a restaurant in New York um, that closed. Um, I think it's called Taralucci and Vino, and they closed because you know our restaurants were closed. But a friend of them in San Francisco said, "Listen, I want to." Um, buy 10 meals for this hospital, would you cook them for me and deliver them for me? And it was like, of, of course. And from that idea um, came that they started creating, I think it's called, I'm missing the word, but I think it's called, um, anyway, I'll, I'll find it, I'll post it on my, on my Instagram. And um, basically they started channeling all donations for the hospital food. And so they became a sort of um, entity and you could donate money and they would deliver um, uh, prepared meals for all the restaurant workers. And I thought that was a brilliant way of, you know, staying with your staff, um, pivoting, uh, doing something new in with the skills you have. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yes, well, I love um, quotes. I think it's such an easy way for, for people to get ideas quickly. Um, when it's time to start, the best time is now. Because basically, um, sometimes I get, well, you know, I didn't start with investing in my networking or I feel I'm behind schedule. It is never too late. Um, in the um, program that we spring, we had uh, people who were as young as 28 and as late as in their mid to late 50s. And they all um, got a lot of information. They got all a lot of um, joy of you know, reconnecting with their career. So that was a very important um, moment of, you know, it's investing in your career is also a great way to reconnect with your purpose, right? Why are you doing? Like sometimes a daily job can feel, challenging or, or you know um, you know maybe it's accounting or maybe it's a repetitive task that is um, challenging but if you um, start looking a little bit in the future then you're thinking okay you know this is today but I'm doing this because in the future I'm going to be CEO of this company or um, or you know I'm working on becoming a head of retail uh, for example and these are um, more inspiring goals than you know when you're just looking at your day-to-day -day job so i'm going to stop sharing my screen i hope that um this was helpful um and of course if anybody has questions i'm looking forward to hearing your questions or if you want me to explore a little bit more one of the specific points that um i i came into right and um Thank you, uh, Charlotte, for um, putting the Instagram. So what I'm really, um, um, what I'm really passionate about is really finding candidates that are into their work. Um, maybe the most important comment that we get from clients is, again, thank you, this candidate was fantastic, but they didn't really seem interested in the current job. 
uh, or in our company, right? And I think that's maybe one of the hurdles is, you know, you're very enthusiastic when you want to get the job, but you don't want to feel that you're over enthusiastic, that you're needy in a way. And so one of the ways is talking about your career, talking how you're investing into your industry, you're learning things about your industry. And this is a great way to show passion, right? To show that you are thinking a little bit more about um, not just your, you know, this specific job, but thinking a little bit long term. Um, so again, it's a selfish reason. We want candidates who are flexible, who are learning new things, who are showing uh, resilience, adaptability, you know, all these um, uh, fine words. Um, but that is very important because you cannot now predict of what um, the company will be going through. So it's very important that you spend a little time and, um, you know, I think it's, it's the saying, you know, wherever your attention goes, um, it grows or something like that. Maybe Charlotte will know uh, more of the, the, the question, but the more people invest uh, in their career, um, the more it shows benefits. So in the group that we had, so as most of you know, I do group coaching. Uh, we started during COVID and we started a program for 24 people. Um, and during three months, basically what we do is the first month we create a clarity card so that people can really understand where they are in their current job, where they want to be, what are their hard skills, their soft skills, how they can talk about themselves and what is missing, right? So that's really the important part. It's the foundation of basically coaching. Uh, the second month, uh, we go into the elevator speech. How can you talk about yourself in a clear and concise way, right? Because this is um, what happens most time is I say to a candidate, you know, tell me about yourself. And the person will go on and on and on and just tell me their whole life. And as a joke, I not as a joke, but uh, one day I timed one candidate that was continuing talking from one question, which was really, tell me about yourself. And he lasted 18 minutes. This was Harvard candidate, um, executive level, really, really um, well um, thought person, a smart and etc. But he didn't realize that, you know, he was just speaking to her, he was going into a monologue and you don't want um, to spend a monologue uh, with a recruiter. So how can you talk, do an elevator speech in under two minutes? Then the third month is basically um, doing a visual presentation. That's a visual template, which is kind of a, um, a vision board of yourself. Um, and it's a bit more personal and it's a fun work. And so during those three months, because we work all together, um, what happened is that the networking between all these 24 candidates is um, has grown. They've seen each other work. They've shared um, personal information, you know, not that deeply personal, but they know each other. They know um, uh, Leticia does Crap Maga. They know Vincent loves flowers. They know, you know, and these are more um, things that they can connect with each other. And so during the three months, they have become really, really, um, I don't want to say good friends, but real um, trusted um, connections. And so now, despite ha never having met in person, despite being in different uh, parts of the world, and they have realized also that they have diversified their network. So we had people that went, um, you know, one was in Rome, one was in Toronto, one is in France, San Francisco, a big majority was in New York amazing, already a geographical um, um, diversity. We had, as I said, candidates went from 28 to mid 50s, late 50s, di diversity of knowledge and uh, age. And then we had people in the arts, we had people um, in watches, we had people in fashion, we had people in uh, the tech, um, and so people in wellness. And so this was very interesting because they all, um, were able to diversify really their network by connecting with people who were a bit more, um, had a, a wider uh, audience. For example, um, the person in wellness um, connected um, through uh, a person in retail to her all network in Los Angeles where she used to live. 
So this was a real in exchange and um, work together. And uh, you can look it up on my LinkedIn and one of the recent posts of the, they're all friends, they all come on their LinkedIn and they have all uh, helped each other and uh, actually uh, connected each other with uh, interesting um, resources, um, even more than what recruiters will do. So um, on that note, I know it's 7.30. I don't know if there's any questions uh, more. Um, and if not, you know where to find me. Um, the website is Sur Mesure Search or Sur Mesure Career. Um, and you have my LinkedIn. You can send me uh, a private message there. Uh, I'm happy, I tell you, this is um, basically uh, my most passionate subject is, you know, why people do what they do, uh, how they're growing their career, what makes them successful, um, how do they network, how, where are they going next? I think that's maybe uh, for a person in recruiting, well, I, I can't speak for every person in recruiting, but for me, what I'm eager to see is where is this person growing and how can I help them be you know, in their path and going in that um, direction. So, um, I think that there's a lot of joy in, in working. It's easier when you have the right network. It's easier when you know where you're going. And it's always easier when you give it a bit of attention. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you all um, for this great turnout. I'm, I'm really impressed and, um, and grateful. Um, again, please connect um, with me. I'll be happy to, to um, get to know you each and, and each and every one of you. And I wish you a very um, great Thursday and, um, and thank you. <laughs>